Well, hey gang, I am pleased to present to you what I think is probably the best battery on the market right now in terms of 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt batteries. You can see over here, I have got a frozen battery. Just pulled it out of the freezer to do a low temp charging protection test on it. I've got a second one here to show you folks how to hook up these two in parallel to create a 200 amp hour, 12.8 volt system. But guys, just let me tell you, I've done a lot of, of battery reviews on this channel and without a doubt, the, these batteries check off every single box. They are priced at $379. So the price is a little bit higher than your typical bare bones 100 amp hour battery. Yes, I get that. But let me explain what all this battery comes with and why I personally think it's one of the best batteries that I've had on this channel. Well, sorry about that. The sun was beaming down in my eyes. So I had to close the garage door, but kind of where I left off, these are absolutely perfect. And I'm gonna quickly tell you why I think they are. But in terms of size, these are group 24 size batteries very, very small, compact batteries that will literally fit anywhere. So we are looking at 10 and an eighth inches wide, eight and a quarter inches tall, and six and a half inches deep. So they're very, very small batteries compared to even some of the other mini batteries and especially the standard size 100 amp hour batteries. You can put two of these together and they basically take up they take up a lot less space than a 200 amp hour battery would if you went to go buy one of those. So overall, the form factor of these things is absolutely perfect. Where these batteries come into play, why they are so awesome, I think, is all of the features that are built into it. So you're gonna have Bluetooth 5.0 on these batteries, so you can log into it, check the state of charge, check the amount of current going into the battery if you have it hooked up to solar check the discharge, how much it's outputting to whatever you have it hooked up to. That's very beneficial, especially for someone like me that has an RV. I like to know where my battery sits. Hooking up a multimeter on LiPo 4 batteries doesn't always give you the full picture of how full your battery is. The voltage curve is so flat on LiPo 4. So being able to know the exact state of charge on these things is fantastic. And built-in Bluetooth 5.0 is great. And also another side note, look at this right here. All of these stickers on top of this battery, it gives you a QR code, it gives you the serial number name, it gives you the Bluetooth name. That might not seem like a big deal, but I've had some batteries that have Bluetooth that it took me a good 30 minutes to find the app that that battery belonged to, to get into the Bluetooth module. Once I clicked on that app, you know it, it pulls up every single Bluetooth item you have in your house and you kind of have to guess which one is the battery and you hope you get it right. Th Lead time did it right you know exactly what app to download. The QR code is on top of the battery. You can quickly get to the app. It's very, very simple, and they actually put some time into it. The batteries are labeled with the Bluetooth name, so you know exactly which one to click on. It, it was just great. It was super easy to find on Bluetooth. Okay, it's got low temp charging protection. This battery's frozen. It's a little bit wet now, but it is not gonna charge below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so this battery's perfect for you folks that live up north that don't wanna charge your battery in the winter time or when it gets below 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. You can connect them up into 4P4S configuration to create a huge battery bank and it's not gonna take up a whole bunch of space. So you can hook up four of these in parallel, you can hook up four of them in series, you can connect those together. You can create kind of whatever type of system you wanna use, whether it's a 24 volt, 48 volt, 12 volt, uh, depending on how many amp hours you want, you kind of have that ability to mix and match these batteries to suit your specific needs. Off on another tangent, Lead Time is just, they, they make good batteries. You can go check Will Prowse's video, a couple of other bigger YouTubers. Um, they, these used to be Ampere Time. They had a good reputation back then. And now that they've rebranded to Lead Time, they just keep putting out new batteries and good batteries. And there's a lot of teardowns on these things. They're built well inside. So I think the price of 379, so I realize that a lot of you watching this um, are gonna think that that's a much higher price than all the other 100 amp hour batteries that at least I've shown on this channel. And that is true. But what you get in terms of quality and features of this battery, I think, I think it's a really, really good deal. You get up to 500 amps worth of discharge for less than one second. So it will kickstart something up to 500 amps as long as that, that amperage doesn't exceed one second. But an easy 100 amp continuous discharge on this thing. I, I'm, I'm contemplating trying to find a way to hook both of these up on my RV to create a 200 amp hour battery. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get these fit on the tongue. I don't wanna have to do a lot of rewiring to fit these inside underneath my RV, you know, underneath the bed. Um, so we'll figure that out. But guys, I just wanted to show you these batteries and what they're capable of. So we're just gonna jump right into the testing that I've done on these batteries 
and uh, we will check back in after all that's said and done. All right, folks, let me show you how I'm going to be doing the capacity test on this lead time. A little bit different this time than, than standard, but I've got the battery hooked up to my Phoenix 250 volt amp inverter. Very, very good inverter. I bought this. It was less than 100 bucks, though, but it does not have a, a huge output. But for something like this or running things like a Starlink or a camera system or just lights at a cabin, these little inverters are perfect. So this is, should be a good test because it's not going to take a lot of power from that battery to actually keep this running. But I do have a set of incandescent lights plugged into a watt meter and I just turned it on and I'm barely, I mean, I got three watt hours going right now. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you the app. So I've got the app pulled up from the lead time battery and I'm at 99% full. You can see that I am pulling 200 and if that focuses, I don't know, 226 watts from this light bulb array. So I'm going to let this thing run completely until that battery dies and then we'll be able to check how long it ran by the runtime on this watt meter and how many uh, kilowatts I was able to get out of that battery to determine if we can get close to the 1280 watt hours off of that battery. So this is the setup and I'll check back in when that battery is completely dead. All right well we have come to an end to this test. My light array is off, my watt meter is completely dead, and this battery is completely done. So let me get this watt meter hooked up to external power so we can see what we were able to get. All right, now for the kilowatts, we're gonna go, we got 1,033 watt hours. So, so we are actually just a hair shy of the 1,280 watt hours that this battery has in it. We are again at 1,033 watt hours. So now I'm gonna do just a straight DC capacity discharge. And right now we just started this test. Uh, so the ba this battery is at 100%. So I'm gonna see if there's a huge difference in just doing straight DC capacity discharging or actually using that inverter to see if we do have that much of a loss using the inverter. Well gang, we just wrapped up the DC capacity test and uh, you can see here I was able to get 103 amp hours out of this lead time battery. So obviously discharging it with just this DC capacity tester yielded a little bit better result than using my inverter. So it is good to know that we were able to get more than 100 amp hours pulled out of this battery with this tester. So next little experiment we're going to do, I'm going to connect two of these lead time 100 amp hour batteries together in parallel to create a 200 amp hour 12.8 volt battery bank. And you can see what I did. I just connected positive to positive and negative to negative. And I've got my inverter cables hooked up to a negative on one battery and a positive on the other going directly into my Phoenix inverter. Uh, you can see here I'm hopefully, oh, hopefully you can see I'm at 100% state of charge. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, if you do get two of these batteries, you cannot run the Bluetooth. Y you have to pick between one or the other battery. I cannot run Bluetooth on both batteries at the same time. So that little orange button in the right is indicating that one of the batteries is connected on Bluetooth. If I want to pick this bottom battery for Bluetooth, It'll give me a prompt that says to switch connection to the following device, make sure it's Bluetooth is turned on, switch Bluetooth connection. So I'm going to hit confirm. And now that bottom battery is connected. So I was kind of hoping that you could run Bluetooth on both batteries, but if you have these connected together, you can only use the Bluetooth function on one or the other battery. But for this little experiment, again, gang, we got 200 amp hours worth of batteries. I've got my 220-ish watt light bulb array. I'm gonna hook it up to this watt meter again, and I'm gonna see how long it'll run and how many kilowatts we're able to pull out of these two 100 amp hour batteries. I'm going to get my inverter cut on. There we go. So let's go. So my kilowatts is at zero. So we're just going to come back when both of these batteries are dead and see how much we were able to get out of it. Well, let's take a look to see where we were able to get off of these two 100 amp hour batteries. So I'm going to first check the voltage on this, see what we're getting. So we're at 11.56 volts. So those batteries are pretty much dead. There's probably still a little bit of juice left in them, but that inverter hit low voltage disconnect and shut the system down. So let's see where we get in terms of 
kilowatts. So we were able to squeeze out 2,035 kilowatts off of these uh, two 100 amp hour batteries in parallel. So there is some inverter efficiency loss coming out of that inverter. Now this is a Victron. It is a, uh, a it's a very nice inverter. However, you are going to get some inverter draw um, just in and of itself having that inverter invert. So um, you know, 2,035 watt hours is not too bad uh, in my opinion having to you know use an inverter. So to check to make sure that this battery can actually discharge 100 amps that it's rated for I've got it hooked up to my little battery testing station. I've got my shunt hooked up so I can monitor the amps that it's pulling and I've got my 2200 watt Gandel uh, pure sign inverter. I've got my heat gun hooked up and we're going to get this thing kicked on and that's getting us around on average 100 amps. So I'm going to get my phone, we're going to get a timer going, start, get this set up here, and we're going to see if this can run it for at least five minutes. All right, well we are still going strong past the five minute mark, we're, we're averaging around 100 amps. Now I'm going to kick this heat gun up to max and just see what happens. Probably not much, but that gets us to 130 amps. Now this battery is rated for up to 500 amps for less than one second, but it can handle a surge. Then there we go. It just shut down. So battery's protecting itself, which is a good thing. But just keep in mind, anything over around 125 to 130 amps for longer than 5 or 10 seconds, that BMS is going to shut down, which is just there to protect the battery, okay? Now, this battery also does have low temp charging protection, so we're going to go toss this thing in the freezer overnight and check it out in the morning to make sure that we cannot put a charge on it. All right, I have no doubt that this battery probably will not charge, just given the fact how well it's done in every other test, but this has been in my freezer for three days. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I got my charger here. It is plugged into AC grid. Positive to positive, negative to negative. And bingo, we are not charging. So yes, low temp charging protection does work on this battery and it is well frozen. Well, as you can see, testing on this battery, everything did extremely well. Uh, it got 103 amp hours off of the straight DC capacity test. That inverter took a little bit more uh, energy than I thought that it would, which is why we didn't get up to the rated 1280 watts on that capacity test. But straight DC, 103 amp hours, guys, Bluetooth 5.0, low temp charging protection, tiny, tiny form factor, lightweight. I think this battery checks off almost every single box that I have for a LiPo 4 battery, especially in the RV world. And, and that Bluetooth is invaluable in my opinion if you don't already have it because the ability to see where your battery is at in terms of state of charge while you're out camping it is so beneficial because you kind of know, you know, do you need to hook up a solar panel to it? Do you need to put a little bit more charge into it? And it's also kind of interesting to see on the discharge side of things, how much your RV uses on the DC side. So I think that's, um, I love having Bluetooth on, on an RV. Uh, you know, hook up a small inverter to this thing and you've got a really compact little DIY portable power station if, if you want. So I, I, I think Lead Time's doing a really good job with their batteries right now. They keep coming out with new batteries, different sizes, different amp hours, different features. And I think this battery for 379 bucks it's still a very, very good deal for all that you get with this battery, and it did well in all of its testing. So I believe as of right now, this is on pre-order, and lead time is scheduling to release these on March the 12th. So right now, of course, they are on sale for $379. I don't know if that price is going to hold after they release this, but uh, right now on lead time's website, they're $379.99. So I'll leave a link for that. I don't get any kind of kickback from lead time if you go buy these from their website. Okay, gang, I don't want you to think I'm out here just trying to get a, get a few bucks. 
if you go buy these batteries. I truly think this is a really, really good battery. I don't get any commission from it, but I will leave a link for this battery down in the description below. And again, these release on March the 12th, but I think it's a pretty good deal. And it's been a really nice battery here in the testing facility of my garage. So gang, until next time, see you soon and take care.